Hey guys, welcome to Homebrew Wednesday for June 5th, 2013. I think this is episode 5 for me. I do have to apologize, I wasn't able to post this on Homebrew Wednesday. Um, it seems my computer picked up a virus, and while I'm filming this, it's currently at the shop being um, repaired. All right, they, uh, they tell me when the virus starts corrupting your Windows uh, operating programs that it's pretty bad. A couple of things I did last week. I did have a chance to bottle the dandelion wine, and I got that on video, but unfortunately I lost it. All right, lesson learned, guys. If you have a camera, don't let your friends muck around with it. All right, but I do happen to have a bottle of it right here. All right, I'll bring it a little closer. All right. Decided to make my own label for it this time. It's called Bootleg Bills Dandelion Wine. 14.6% right. alcohol of what it came out to. And the bottom line reads, less than 30 days old or your money back. It seems to be a catchphrase for all of my home brews. Right. <clears throat> I made the... Uh, the labels from a off a website called beerlabelizer.com. If I can figure out how to do it, I'll put a link to the website down below. I do have a glass of it right here. As you can see, it is absolutely crystal clear. All right, um, and now it's still young and harsh. All right, most people let their wines age for six months to a year. Honestly, three months is good enough. Uh, this has only been bottled for uh, about three days, all right, but we'll give it a shot anyway. First thing I note is the, uh, the citrus notes from the orange and the lemons that we added. That's about it. Oh, oh I, you can't taste any of the uh, oranges or the lemons. Just a hint of raisins. All right, uh, this recipe does call for a pound of raisins. I know in the uh, the video that I shot, <clears throat> you guys didn't see me putting those in, but that was the very first video I ever made, and I mean obviously I wasn't comfortable around the camera. Uh, a couple of things I did this week: I made a hopped vodka. All right, I have the bottle uh, right here. I call this one Hop Again. I made it with an ounce of Cascade hops and the directions say use with really crappy beers. All right, now the general idea behind making this is, <clears throat> all right, you make it, take a small amount of it to a family function, picnic, cookout, barbecue, uh, what have you. <clears throat> you find yourself drinking really crappy beer, uh, Coors Light, for example. You take yourself a quarter shot, a half a shot, maybe even a whole shot. Pour it into the beer, all right? Gives it a hop flavor, hop aroma. Turns a crappy beer into, you know, something decent you can drink, all right? At least until you can go home and have yourself a very good and refreshing homebrew. Um, <clears throat> the Kit and Kilo uh, beer that I made with you guys a few episodes back was ready to bottle. I did a brief video showing all the newbies to homebrew, how you bottle a beer and then cap it, although I think it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Something else I had going on this week, I'm trying an experimental one gallon batch of hopped apple cider uh, that's currently in secondary fermentation. Uh, when that's done, I'll bottle it. When it's uh, carbonated, I will uh, do a beer review for you guys. And if it turns out good and I like it, I'll make a larger five-gallon batch. I'll get that on video. <clears throat> I also picked up a packet of turbo yeast to make a sugar wash. Um, basically, all you do is you add a whole crap load of sugar, about 18 pounds. Uh, dissolve it uh, in the five gallons of water. You pitch this turbo yeast, and in about five days, you're supposed to have 20% alcohol. All right, but alcohol is all is all all it is. So you're gonna have to find some way to add your own flavors to it. Um, I used uh, turbo yeast once before, and it didn't turn out very well. It was uh, very alcoholic. It was also unbelievably sweet. I ended up having to dump the whole batch. 
Um, back to the hopped vodka. <coughs> Alright, how you make this is real simple. You buy the cheapest vodka that you can find, because it's not meant for drinking, although if you really wanted to, you can do shots of it. You find a container to pour it into. You throw in an ounce or two ounces of your favorite hops or any hops you have laying around. You let it sit for about five days and then you filter the hops out of it. I used a French press coffee maker with wonderful results. Although, as you can see, you do lose a little bit of it in the process. All right. um, no harm, no foul. I think this bottle only cost me about $6.50. Um, I did start the elderberry wine. Um, I got that on video. I think I'm going to do that in a couple of different parts. Um, no sense in making a video that's an hour and a half long if nobody's going to sit and, and watch it for that long. Or maybe you will. I don't know. No. That's just really nice, guys. It's light. It's uh, refreshing. At 14% alcohol, you know, you can get pretty shit-faced off of this, right? So you might want to be careful, you know, drink too much of it. You don't remember you're going to bed. You wake up in the morning, the wifey's irritated. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys this week. All right, uh, thanks for watching my videos. If you like them, thumbs up. Comment if you'd like. Subscribe if you will. I hope your week this far has been very good. I hope the rest of your week is even better. All right, happy Homebrew Wednesdays, guys. Cheers, 17, and take care.